There are quite a few ways to become a millionaire right now, whether it be developing an app, start a successful company, become a trader, work for your whole life, or get into real estate. All of them are based off of hard work and time, but I think one of them provides you with the easiest way to become a millionaire in a shorter period of time than the others. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Jacob Fisher, and today we're talking about the easiest way to become a millionaire. I'm going to go through the steps you would need to take and the expected time frame you could establish, but keep in mind you can make this shorter or longer depending on your own aspirations. I also wanted to say that this is in no way super easy and will take hard work and a fair amount of time, but I think getting into real estate to have a net worth of a million dollars can be much easier than developing an app or trying to wait to be successful in another company. First off, you also need to have an income of around $50,000, and then this becomes relatively achievable. Also, you should be fairly good at saving money because you will need money saved to be able to purchase a house with a down payment. With that said, let's tap the like button and get into it. I found this on the internet to tell me the estimated income of somebody living in Denver, and that was around $50,000. That means you could easily afford a $380,000 house in Denver, not that the houses cost that little, but I guess some of them do, I did find a couple. That's the house you live in and you pay $16.15 a month with mortgage and property taxes, etc. all that stuff. Keep that number in mind though, because that will be the estimated house value that we'll use for the rental properties I'm gonna explain in a bit. You've got your house, you've got the payment you're making on the house, your mortgage payment, but now you need to save up for another down payment that you can put towards a rental property. You would need to find a similar house to the one you just purchased, right around $380,000. Now your mortgage on that would again be $1,615, but you could rent it out for $2,200 a month. That is again, rental prices that I found in the area around me. As long as you're renting out for more than what you purchased the house for, you're set. You are cash flowing positive. You can set the rent for whatever you want, higher or lower, but $2,200 was a rent I found for pretty much the exact same house for $380,000. So this rent, provides you with a profit of right around $600 a month in income that you get from this. But someone is also pretty much just paying your mortgage and generating a net worth for you. So every month your net worth increases by 1615 times two because you have your house and then you have the rental property that's being rented out. Five years go by of you just owning a single rental property and home, your net worth is around $420,000 from your owned house and your rental property. You still have around $480,000 in total home debt though. You're making right around $10,000 a year from the rental property, which should help you purchase a new home and pay off any repairs or any kind of issues that might happen with the house. At this point, you could buy another home or you could buy two other homes to again, rent out. If you just buy one home and another five years goes by, your net worth sits around 1 million with uh, $880,000 in home debt still. Let's just break down how much each house is worth plus the debt on each. House one, let's say you've had for 12 years because I don't think you went out and bought a house and a rental property on the same day of purchase. I think you've probably waited a bit, saved up a bit more for the down payment. You could obviously do that, but let's just say in this case you didn't. The equity in house one is about $120,000 of the actual house value that you've paid with about $260,000 left to go. But the total house value is now $600,000 thanks to real estate generally increasing 35 to 4% per year. It depends where you live, but that's the general overall increase in the US for house value or house prices. House one is worth $600,000 with $260,000 in debt and about $340,000 in value, that's just from subtracting. House two, you've been renting out for 10 years, so its payments have been about $100,000 with $280,000 left in debt to pay off. The value of a house is about $560,000, so your value is about $280,000 on the house. You've also generated about $72,000 in income from the rental property. If you didn't have any repairs, you probably did, but we're just saying if you didn't. House three, you've been renting out for five years, so payments are $56,000 with $324,000 left to pay off. That home value is now $460,000, leaving you with $126,000 in value from the house. Your total value with inequity at the end of 12 years with three homes would be about $746,000 with a debt of $874,000, $58,000 of which you would pay off every single year through the rental property being paid down and your own mortgage going down. 
With the math, you'd be bringing in about $14,400 a year from rental income. Your total home value, that's including the debt, would be $1.62 million, and that would increase about 35 to 4% every year. Three years later, so a total of 15 years with only two rental properties in your own home, you would have about $1 million in net worth when you factor in the increase in home price and the debt pay down that is happening. This sounds like a generally easy plan to me because really you're having other people pay you to increase your net worth. So that's kind of easier than increasing it yourself. You do need to keep up with upkeep insurance and the other general hassles of renting a house, but at the end of 15 years, you would probably be worth about a million dollars. You could always get rental properties sooner or more rental properties if you find that you really enjoy renting out properties and being a landlord. I would say make sure you don't stretch yourself too thin and end up having to pay money on each rental property each month and you would be losing money. That wouldn't be good. One of the biggest factors affecting this though is to making sure your rental income is more than the mortgage and tax and payments for the house. So that's like step one. If you can't find that in your area, it might be difficult to do. But overall, I think this just sounds like a relatively easier way to become a millionaire. Now, I'm not saying that I wanna do it. In fact, I don't think I would enjoy being a landlord. I don't think I would go down this road. I'd probably stick to the stock market like I am now, but this is definitely one way to go about it. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this idea and if you wanna get into rental property income at some point in your life. I upload videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on travel and finance. If that sounds like something interesting to you, make sure you subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.